Hey guys, it's Jonathan here from Set Sail, and today I want to talk about success. We're going to ask some big questions today. And the main question is, what is success? What does it actually look like? What is that defining thing that makes us say this person is successful and this person is not successful? This is something I've been thinking a lot about recently and reading a lot of books, having a lot of conversations with people. And I want to share some of the things that I've found through this video, share some of my own thoughts on the topic, but also share some other people's perspectives too. One of the interesting things that I've found is that when you listen to people talk who are in theory successful, whether that's in business or wealth or fame, they all seem to say the same thing and that is that no amount of success can actually make us happy. So I was successful in the music business, I was successful in modeling, in television, in real estate. So I made all this money and I had all this success and here I was going, okay, I still don't feel any different. And I had banked everything on that making me feel better, or feel happier. And so if you are looking for fame to define you, then you will never be happy. And you will always be searching for happiness and it, you will never find it in fame. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and, and still think there's something greater out there for me? I reached my goal, my dream, my life is, it's gotta be more than this. You know, I thought that all would be helped and healed and soothed by fame. Because when I get famous, yes. then I will, I will be less lonely. Yes. And I will be understood and I will be loved and that love will go in and heal any of the broken parts. I had bought into the not uncommon notion that when I taste success, when I get over there, then I'll be happy. But the strangest thing happened. As the show got more successful, I got more depressed. And it's not just celebrities. I've heard the same story from close friends and people that I know that have achieved great things in life and seemingly reached their dreams and their goals and they say it's just not as fulfilling as you think it's gonna be. I think it's so easy to fall into that trap of chasing a certain measure of success that we think, if I can just get here, I'll be happy. If I can just achieve this, I'll be happy. Especially in this age of social media and the world of likes and views and subscribers and followers. Like, how many followers is enough followers? How many subscribers does it take to make you happy? Even from like social media stars, we hear the same story. Because the success of this vlog has not satiated my appetite. It's only made me more hungry. You can go with social media. Are you ready? How long are they gonna like me posting this stuff? Let's be honest, you never know how far social media is really gonna go. All of these little things creates anxiety. I was surrounded by all this wealth and all this fame and all this power, and yet they were all miserable, and I had never been more miserable. So if that is the case, that all of this stuff doesn't really make you happy, it leads me to think, is that really success? Now I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus, and I'm always interested to see what did Jesus say about these things? What does the Bible say about these things? And is there a difference between what the Bible calls successful and what the rest of society calls successful? Jesus himself said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So what is a full life? What does the Bible say about success? Jesus often taught people in parables and told short stories that illustrate a point that he was trying to make. One of those stories was the parable of the talents, which I'm now gonna illustrate through Playmobil. So the story goes that there was a rich man, let's say the CEO of a major company, and he organizes a meeting with three of his servants. Um, he says, I'm going on holiday uh, for like three months or whatever. All the guys are like, sweet. And then he says, but I want to give you an investment for while I'm away. Um, and then he gives each of them an investment of money. He gives one five million pound, another three million pound, and another one million pound according to their abilities. Um, and then he heads off on his trip. Now, three months later, he comes back off his trip and he sets up a meeting with the four of them again to see how they got on. The first guy's been working pretty hard, he's been putting some deals together, doing some trades, and he comes back to the meeting and says, you gave me five million pounds and I've made 10 million. To which the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little and I'll set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. The second guy did the same thing. He was given three million and he brought back six million and he gets the same response from the master. But the third guy was basically afraid. He was too afraid to risk. He was too afraid to lose what was given to him. Um, so he didn't do anything with the money and he went and hid it until the master came back. So when he came back, he, he brought back his one million pounds and the master was not a happy chappy. So what's the point of the story? The point is that the ones that pleased the master are the ones that took what was given to them and did something with it. I don't know about you guys, but I want to be one of those people that gets to the end of my life stands before God and hears those words, well done, good and faithful servant. The question on my mind is, what did the servant do to be called that? It's really simple. He took what the master gave him and he used it. And perhaps more importantly, he was faithful. He stuck at it. One of the things that God calls successful is to take the things that he's given us, our gifts, our abilities, the things that he's put into our hand, and to use those for his glory. Maybe you're a great musician or an artist. Maybe you're a scientist, maybe you're a teacher. Are you using those things? Are you fulfilling your purpose? 
I actually think the word purpose is a huge part of how we decide what success is. I actually believe we have two types of purpose, who we were created to be and what we were created to do. So first let's look at who we're meant to be. Like, it's a big question. Why did God make people? What was his purpose for creating humankind? So for that, I look to the first commandment that Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 38. And Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. The very first commandment is that commandment to love, to love God, to be in relationship with God. God created a people that he could love and that could choose to love him in return. And he wants relationship. We were made for relationship. And the thing that makes love real is choice. We don't automatically love God without any say in the matter. We have a choice to love God and that choice is what makes the love real. So when we know that God loves us and we choose to love him back, I believe we're achieving the highest purpose of humankind. The very thing that God created people for, for relationship with him, to love him. From what the Bible's saying, that right there is a successful human being. This is our identity, like our purpose at the very deepest level. But what about the second part? What are we meant to do? While I believe that every person was created to be in relationship with God, I also believe that we have assignments, things that God gives us to do here on earth. And that looks different for each person. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We each have different work to do. We all have different assignments and different things that we were made for. The Bible describes the way that we're meant to be through the imagery of a body in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that wouldn't make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. And if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The amazing thing about this is that whatever the thing is that you're called to, even if it's completely different from everyone else around you, you still belong. It also means that success in terms of doing what we're meant to do looks different for each person. If an ear keeps trying to pick things up, it's not going to do a very good job at it because that's what the hand's meant to do. <laughs> it's not going to be a successful picker upper because it's an ear, it's supposed to hear things. The hand is created to pick things up, right? If you're trying to do things that you weren't created for because you see someone else doing it, it's not gonna work. Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. If we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people and thinking, well, they look more successful than me or I'm not achieving what that person's achieving, then we're gonna lose that joy. There are plenty of people out there trying to be other people, but nobody can be you, only you can be you. So you've gotta find the thing that you were created to do and do it faithfully and do it with all your heart. Remember that story of the talents and the things that God gives to us. What gifts has God given you? What are the things you really enjoy? What are the things you're passionate about? What are the things you're good at? And how can you use those things for God's glory? Somebody might be called to be a hugely popular musician and someone else might be called to just be a great mum and raise a family. Someone might be called into business and government. Like everyone's assignment is different and you've got to find what that is for yourself. I think that's really exciting and really freeing that I don't have to look like this person. You don't have to look like me. <laughs> we don't have to do the same thing to be successful. If everyone finds that part of the body that they're to be understands their purpose and does it faithfully then the whole body's going to work together you might not know right now what your life's going to look like or even the things that you're supposed to be doing i will say that if you pursue the things that you love that you're really good at and you do it in relationship with god and in prayer and in giving those things back to him amazing things are going to happen because when we have that thing right of who we're meant to be and we have that relationship with god um, we start to learn more about why he created us. He starts to speak to us about these things and you'll be amazed at what God can do with your life. I never sat down and planned this all out and said, right, I'm gonna start a band, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I just had things that I loved and things that I enjoyed and I prayed and I said, God, would you use these things? I know that you've created me to be able to do these things and I wanna use them for you and that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I've heard about missionaries that God's called to really unreached people groups and no one even knew what they were doing over there. They might have just reached like a few people. Whether we know their names or not, they've been successful. They've been hugely successful in God's eyes and they've been faithful. So I believe that's what the Bible calls success. To be in relationship with God, to find that thing that you were created to do and to be faithful in doing that. I believe that's the kind of life that when everything's said and done and we stand before God, we bring that offering back and say, God, I did something with what you gave me and we're going to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. I believe that is true success. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It's kind of a different thing. Um, I realize this is a huge topic and something that's probably way too big to cover in just one of these videos. So keep the discussions going. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, share this video if you found it interesting. And, um, and it's something I'm going to keep exploring and hopefully you keep exploring. And uh, we'll learn more about this thing together. So thank you guys for watching. See you later. Set sail, video blog. Set sail, be